To ensure hell and its sinners could never rise against them. To ensure hell and its sinners could never rise against them. Never rise against them. Never rise against them. Never rise against them. Rise against them. Uh, you know, it's crazy how one line can undercut the entire premise of a story, rendering what could have been an otherwise solid idea for a story irrelevant, with it chugging along blissfully unaware that it's already given away the game, creating a contradiction between how the characters act versus the information that they know. Has been Hotel screwed up with this one line, as by telling the audience that the main character knows that Heaven is only killing people to maintain power, not because of overpopulation, but then acting like Charlie still thinks this is about overpopulation and therefore a problem that her hotel can solve, when the actual issue is that Heaven is just fucking evil. So what's the point? Point of the hotel. I know this is gonna come off as nitpicky or inconsequential to most people, but I promise you there's layers to how this one tiny section alters just my entire view of the show. And to dig into that, we have to first explain why the story worked better without it. You know, cause hotels are for people passing through temporarily. From the pilot, Hasbun Hotels seem to have a fairly simple plot. The story took place in Hell, sinners can't die, therefore Hell suffers from chronic overpopulation, so to deal with this, Heaven would send an army of angels every year to purge demons en masse. The demons seem to have no way to fight back against the angels, so this yearly culling would become the expected norm, with all the demons in Hell seemingly being just selfish assholes who weren't choked up about any of their friends or colleagues getting got, with the sole exception to this acceptance of the status quo being Charlie, Princess of Hell and a beacon of hope. Charlie is without contest the nicest person here. She's the only individual we see who's actually crying over the carnage, with her desire to do something manifesting in the happy hotel. As again, the stated reason for the extermination is overpopulation. So Charlie's idea is that if they can redeem sinners, get the demons who failed in life to atone for their sins and become better people, then they might just be able to one day get accepted into heaven. This would create an alternative to the exterminations, saving the day and encouraging an attitude of betterment not fatalistic wallowing that was the norm. Now here's why this premise works as is. Firstly, we don't know what Heaven's deal is. Yes, as an audience, we understand that a group of people that wear masks and wipe out entire neighborhoods on site, like, they're never gonna be the good guys. However, if you live in this world, and notice the world building in it, you can see how people would grow accustomed to it. They would come to see the exterminations as part of their everyday life, one that is inflicted upon them, but is also done because it has to be. We don't know why the angels are doing this, or why the demons think it's really happening, so everything is just really left up to interpretation. So then, we have Charlie, who doesn't have a bad bone in her body. She could assume that this is done out of some messed up sense of necessity. That Hell's overpopulation problem is that bad. Sinners allegedly can't die, so if you need to make room for new souls, you can rationalize it as a necessary evil. Something that doesn't feel good, but since this is coming from heaven, the quote-unquote good people, then you can understand why people like Charlie would give them the benefit of the doubt. That this really is an issue of overpopulation, making her desire to create an alternative feel valid. As she really does believe that heaven is a good place. A place that is worthy of her people who redeem themselves moving from heaven to hell. To her, going there is a good thing. So her trying to help people redeem themselves works. You understand the logic. They don't know if it's possible, but it's still a journey worth taking. We as audience members, yeah, we can have just our suspicions that heaven isn't all it's cracked up to be. That any group that defaults to decimating a population every year will probably be revealed to be evil on some level. But what's important for the story is that the characters don't know this for sure. This could be revealed later, that heaven has never been good, that they never would have given sinners a chance and trigger a darkest hour, where all the characters who work to be better people can slip back into bad habits or realize that they like being good, showing that self-improvement is its own reward, and that being good isn't some prerequisite to go to a better place. As when you think about it, the incentive of being a good person to just be rewarded later is kind of at its core selfish. So the people who end up in heaven, rather than just being the good people, it could also just be those who had the luxury to be good, or those who just restrain themselves for their get out of hell free card. Heaven in the has been universe has been real to be kind of fucked up. Hell of a boss pretty much confirmed this. The angels we get to meet are nice, but they're not good. With selling a small as an accident, getting them barred from the pearly gates. This was always going to be a thing, but Charlie taking heaven at its word that this is about overpopulation is what makes this story and her plan make sense. As if you have her know, then suddenly we have to second guess everything. 
So let's do that. Now to clear this out of the way, the line that Charlie says is out of a storybook. It is a retelling of how Hell was formed, her father Lucifer's fall from grace, how he met her mother Lilith, and the hope is for Charlie to be the one to carry on Lilith's legacy. We don't know who wrote it, but the bias in the book heavily leans toward the author being Lilith. Threatened by this, Heaven made a truly heartless decision. One could say that this line is from Lilith's perspective, not Charlie's. That Charlie may say it, but that doesn't mean she believes it. This, though, is undercut by the fact that everything else in the book fully conforms to Charlie's worldview. From her opinions on her father, to the tragedy of what happened to her parents, the potential for hell, all these other lines could have been said by Charlie word for word, and nobody would question it. So let's not pull the it's not her card for the one line that fucks up the story. But taking the line as is means that Charlie was raised on the the idea that Heaven's use of the exterminations wasn't about overpopulation, but about limiting the power of Hell, so that it could never challenge Heaven, removing any ambiguity that this was some necessary evil, but an atrocity done in the interest of maintaining power. In effect, the story has moved beyond personal stories of redemption and change. Instead, the focus has shifted to a larger scale conflict between what is basically nations. One where the idea behind the main character's plans feel out of sync with what they know, as having sinners join Heaven won't change the fact that the angels are more focused on control than redemption, meaning they have no reason to accept Charlie's plan, and she knows this. Even if demons could make it to heaven, they would probably still keep killing people, as that would keep hell in its place and thin the herd out way more than just one or two redemptions here and there. Our perception of what she's trying to do with the hotel now feels off, as by telling us this, by introducing the angels in episode 1, we realize that rather than the story focusing on how people can improve, Charlie's big idea to save everyone boils down to the fact that sinners should change to gain the approval and acceptance of their oppressors. That they need to become better so that heaven will recognize them as people by their standards. A standard, again, that has already been proven to be deeply flawed. With angels like Adam being misogynistic fuckboys, and the other one Loot telling Charlie that she doesn't matter that angels are incapable of making mistakes, I think we just proved that all these angels are just awful. These are the kinds of people that Charlie thinks sinners should better themselves for, whose approval the show is now built around gaining. Even if you say that all of heaven isn't like this, or that oh it's just some of the leaders here and everyone else is like kind of good, their existence proves that heaven itself is flawed. That even if you want to be charitable, the other angels while not being guilty of doing the thing, are not speaking up against it, instead allowing the exterminators to slay the demons. Hell isn't much better, there is a lot of problems here, but all evidence points to heaven just being a different kind of fucked up, and it feels like Charlie should know this, so her plan just feels off. And also, disclosure. This is not me basing my take off of just one line and two episodes of the show. No, I'm basing this on the first five. As yeah, I got screeners. So when I tell you that Hasbin Hotel feels like a side hustle in its own show, I want you to know that I'm from the future and dead serious. The hotel has yet to feel like it is going to be the thing that will actually save hell, is struggling to feel like it's the thing that will save individual sinners. Instead, there's just constant pressure to use the personal growth of characters to prove something to heaven. But through all of it, Charlie continues to act like this is their one shot, despite the intro pointing out that even if she is optimistic, that she is hopeful, she should know that overpopulation is an excuse not the actual reason. So therefore, the goal of the hotel, if you believe that she knows this, the goal of the hotel is now effectively a PR campaign for psychopaths who have already made up their mind. If you cut that line, Charlie's behavior can still be viewed as sincere and well-intended. But with it, we take a story where the hotel part of Hasbin is already struggling for relevance, then we have pretty much a double disconnect. We're following a premise to a solution that we know won't go anywhere. It won't be accepted. Heaven is never going to do this unless someone else takes over. But the story and Charlie keep insisting that it is possible, and relying on faith that heaven will choose to do good, even though all evidence just points to them doing what is in their interest. And you add in the fact that not only does Charlie say heaven is doing this for power, but then you show the angels are playing a full-on coal of hell in just six months. It all builds to a sense that Hasman has only just started and it's already trying to outgrow its premise. It's juggling too many ideas and not giving them the time that they need. All the while the story acts like it didn't say the thing that it did, and how it would give its characters pause to choose a different course of action. It feels like they wrote this line, then didn't think about how it would affect the characters and the rest of the story. This doesn't add foreshadowing for heaven being bad. They just tell you that. It doesn't set up heaven versus hell as being some inevitability. This line just exists and it undercuts the concept of the hotel. And this is bad in a season that is already struggling to make the hotel the focus of the story. Charlie, knowing heaven is doing this for power, implies that they would do this regardless of whether or not they consider sinners to be people and worthy of respect. So the whole concept of the show is 
screwed, and every choice this season makes only adds to that. But to me, this line is what fucks it, as rather than just questioning the plot, we're now considering inconsistencies in the characters. I'm praying that the show salvages this in the finale. But I am worried, and I have yet to be convinced that this line wasn't a mistake. 